Hello everybody. Welcome to day three. So it is day three of five and it is email list and building that email list day today. So I'm just going to open up a minute early to see who might join us today and I'm very excited to um, really connect with you guys. So I'm just going to turn my phone off because I don't really want to get distracted by that during the live. Okay, so let us try and just, okay. So we are streaming live on a few different pages. So I'll be checking each page and for comments and questions. So please ask any questions that you like. If it's regarding, obviously, if it's got something to do with your business and you need some help. But um, today we are going to be talking about building your list with social media. I'm so excited about this because this is one of my favorite topics. I love sending emails and talking with my audience. I love social media and cr content creation and it kind of mixes the two together. So it's, you know, it's definitely the sweet spot for me is, 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 is an engaged email list and talking with my audience because I do love to write. So I love, I love writing. And so, you know, being on camera for me is not something that um, I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, as most people probably feel the same way. I think it takes a really unique person to love being on camera. So that's, I guess, why we pay so many actors so much money to get on screen. Um, so yeah, and podcasting, I love it. I love podcasting as well because it's just my voice, but my real passion would have to be in the written word. I really love writing. So it is awesome to be able to write emails to people and talk to people and hopefully they can reply and please if you do if you are on my email list and you're listening to this live please write back to me I do receive the emails they don't go to some um, pie in the sky email place that nobody sees or reads they actually do go to my inbox and I do go through my emails and I do reply and I, I would love to you know build a relationship with you guys um, through my email as well so uh, who is here today? Who is here? Have we got, say hi if you're on. I would love to see you. Now, I'm still figuring out how to see who is actually in the lives and who's watching. So, let me see. How can I see that? Who's there? So, say hello if you're on. Say hi. Just put a, a wave in the comments, something, whatever, I don't mind. I would love to chat during the live stream. We can chat and, you know, you can ask questions, things like that. And at the end, I will get back to you and answer those questions if, uh, if you have something that you'd like to really know today. Otherwise, if you have questions later, please, as I said, feel free to email me or send me a DM. Hello, Alyssa. Hi, Natalie. Good to see you. And there we go. <laughs> so good to see you guys back again today. Um, this, hopefully this live is, has a lot of value for you. And um, I think it's 12.03, so let's get into it. Now, I don't want to waste too much time today sort of going over who I am and all that sort of thing because we've done these lives two, two days in a row now. Oh, we're on day three. I can't believe it. Um, I challenged myself this week that I would do five days straight uh, of videos because, number one, getting on video is difficult for me. I felt like this would be an amazing way to get used to being on camera so that I can show up more in uh, in lives and videos and video training and things like that and it can really benefit my courses as well. So um, I wanted to do this this week and hopefully connect with more of you on a different level 
and I think video kind of does that a little bit better than just writing posts and things like that. So hopefully you're getting a lot out of this week. So today, as I said, the topic today is building your list with social media. We're going to take a really close look at how to increase your email list and how to nurture your audience with social media, but we're not just going to talk about how to do it. We're going to put uh, look at how to plan out your posts and your emails effectively, as well as how to schedule them ahead of time. And most of all, we're going to see how people are leveraging email lists today. So the, the and also talk about the best way to use email lists for your business success. So if you haven't already done so, please head over to the link in um, the discussion and it will have the five day toolkit link. You'll be able to grab that today. If you haven't received that as yet, that's okay um, because the toolkit today is going to have, number one, it's gonna have captions with your challenge in there for today for your social media. The second thing it will have is a ebook that I put together called Five Ways to Nurture Your Email List. So we're gonna talk about a lot of that today, so you won't really need that to follow along, but it will be a great re resource for you to have moving forward. So if you do stay to the end, and you do the challenges as well, I'm going to send all of my precious tribe, as I like to call you guys that are in my email list, my beautiful tribe, I'm going to send you my email swipe file. And that is going to have a, a lot of emails in there that you can use to engage more with your audience and also hopefully build uh, a list through social media as well. So my email swipe files will have posts, for social media as well as email scripts that you can use and all you need to do is copy and paste and fill in the blanks. So hopefully you'll stay to the end for that freebie. Now again, please hashtag 24 social narrative. I'm going to post that in the comments so that you know exactly what to write when you are doing your social posts so that I can follow along. Again, that is a little bit of a contest as well so that if you do use this hashtag and I can follow along oh awesome Natalie that's really great Natalie's just said that the perfect this is perfect timing for her as she needs to send out emails over the next few days to her existing customers so that's awesome I'm so glad that this will be great for you so 24 social narrative the hashtag is the hashtag for the lives that we're using if you use that that hashtag um, as well I can follow along with you and um, also be on your social media with you and see how you're going and you know comment and, and encourage you as well. Plus it'll get you into the draw for uh, the three month membership for 24 Social Narrative which is as we've talked about that is going to be my subscription releasing at the end of November for all of your social posts it'll give you narrate, narrated lifestyle images and captions and lead magnet templates and also templates for stories as well for your social media so let's get into it okay so as you guys know i'm amy leafa and i'm a photographer and a podcaster and a marketer and i love to help people who are struggling with their social media that is my joy in life is to help people succeed in their business um, when it comes to my business, I get so much satisfaction out of it and I really want to help you build your dream and make it a reality. So if you go back and listen to my other um, videos, if you haven't already, you'll know more about me there because today it's a quite a, a long, it's not going to be very long, but there's a lot of content. So I want to get straight into it and we're going to talk about nine different ways, d different things that you can do to actually build your social media and build your email list with social media. So let me tell you, you're in the right place if this is a struggle for you and social media is an overwhelm and it's a sore point for you. We are going to helpfully this week really take care of that for you and put it all in place. So let's talk about email lists, shall we? All right. So when you're conti continuing to grow your, sub your subscriber list is a really vital part of your success in your business. Dare I say that email is, one, it is probably the most important and invaluable assets that you have for your business. It, it is part of your business equity. When people buy a business, they're not buying the bricks and mortar, they're not buying the staff, they're not buying, they, they are buying your product, but 
in essence, they're actually buying your email list. So there is a lot of businesses out there, such as um, mortgage brokers, there's different types of industries where buying somebody's email list is actually basically buying their business. So that is a general rule for most businesses, and especially if your business is primarily online. But it's no good buying an email list that is not engaged. So it's really important to have a really engaged email list, a, a list of people that actually subscribe to you and they're eager to hear from you. They open up your emails, they may respond, they join in the conversation, they click on links, they do the things that you are directing them to do during your email conversations with them. So you really wanna have an, an email list that is buying your products and buying your services and really has a good, um, has a good rapport with you and your brand. So according to some research that's just been released, the average email open rate is only 32%. So if you have an effective strategy and a smart plan, you can actually grow your list. Sorry, my eyelash is really itchy all of a sudden. I think because I've got the fan on, it's really hot under these lights. Please forgive me. I am human and uh, it's so hot right now. It's summer in Australia. And uh, yeah, it's quite hot. So I've got the fan on and stuff. So tell me if the fan is annoying you and I'll turn it off. Um, if you can hear it in my microphone, please. Uh, I'd like to make sure that this is a nice sound. Sound is very important for these videos. Okay, so with the right effective strategy and a good plan, you can grow your list, keep your engagement rates really high, and it can really benefit your business and especially the value of your business. So I'm going to give you some practical ways that you can get more qualified email subscribers. And in fact, I have actually just started auditing my email list uh, again this year. I like to do this every 90 days. And what I'm doing is I'm scanning to see who has been opening my emails, who are engaged in my emails. And if they haven't actually opened my emails in the last 90 days, I will send them an email asking them if they'd like to stay in my list, if they'd like to stay uh, continuing to get emails from me. And if I, if I don't hear back from them, then I archive their details. If I do hear back from them and they want to stay on, I might put them on a different type of list. Maybe I'll, I give them an option if they want to stay on the list to be either a light subscriber or a heavily engaged subscriber. And I have three different types of subscribers that I tend to sort of email on a regular basis. So if they get back to me and say they'd like to unsubscribe, then that's great because I don't, I don't want people that aren't engaged with me and I don't want to be annoying people. Plus, if you're just having a large email list and but if half of them aren't actually opening your emails, that plays a major role in your delivery rate and your open rate on your campaigns. So whatever um, software you're using, whether it's MailChimp or Aweber or CovertKit or any of the email systems that you might be using, they have delivery rates and open rates and it can really affect your campaigns. So basically you won't get a true reading or a true statistic on your engagement if most of your engagement is not really, you know, people opening that you've got I'd rather just have five people on my list that are constantly opening my emails than have 150, 3,000 people and have half of those people or more than half of those people not even looking at my emails. That just doesn't give my statistics the correct or the true reading. And I really want to share my services and products with people who really want to hear from me. I, I don't want to annoy people. So I don't want to be just one of those emails that gets lost in the you know in in the junk mail and because you know as you as you guys probably know i put a lot of effort into my emails and i'm sure that you guys do as well and i put a lot of effort and time goes into building my e-courses and the campaigns and everything that i do i put a lot of love and and i put a lot of effort into doing those for people so i don't I don't want it going into you know the ethos and nobody reads it. So I'd rather have just a few subscribers, and they're constantly engaged with me than having you know hundreds of it's subscribers that don't want to hear from me. And I'm sure you would as well. And you know raise your hand if if that's you as well. So 
I hear you girlfriends, I do. And it can be a really daunting task to grow your email list. And ha I know that if your business is active on social media, you actually have a really tremendous tool at your disposal that can help you grow that list and make it really engaged. You can, it, with, with social media, you can get right in front of a broader audience and they will, which will allow you to gain a lot more subscribers than if you were just emailing people and hoping that they share your email. So I'm going to give you some ways now, so there's about nine ways that we can, easy, easy ways to follow as well to get more email subscribers with social media. So I got you my friends, let me lay down nine ways that you can use social media to increase your list as well as how to deliver what people want to hear from you. Okay, so the first thing, and if you haven't got a notepad and pen, I'll give you a second to do that while I have a sip of my coffee. <laughs> my throat gets a little bit scratchy from talking. If you've got a pen and paper in front of you, yes, Natalie, I am the same. I hear you. Um, so, pen and paper, write this down. The five of these will be in your ebook, but some of this will be exclusively for the video. So um, follow along and write down as much as you can as you go. Obviously, you can rewatch this at any time if you miss something. Okay, so number one, use a really simple sign up form. This is really important because no matter what size business that you have, you need to make signing up really, really easy. It has to be easy. People don't, as you know, a lot of people online, they don't have a lot of time to be filling out forms and doing things that are not interesting. Most people are scanning, they might be on your website for a few minutes and then they're off. So if you really want someone to sign up, make it really easy for them to do it. Now, if you're using Facebook at all, there is a, a tab on Facebook that you can have. It's like a, a button that people can press. It's just underneath your um, heading image and it can be learn more it can be call me message me all that sort of stuff so if you click on that and edit it you can actually um, have a sign up that as a sign up button so it's on the top right hand side of your page and you can make it an email sign in and I've done that on my pages and it's a great way an easy easy way to get people to sign up to you to your um, newsletters and, and things like that so that way they just have to click the icon, visit your sign up form and there are several different options to add and you can just set up an email form straight to your business profile. So that's really easy. Another thing you can do on Instagram, if you have Instagram is also where it says messages. If you have any message bots or instant reply set up, have um, the link to your website's sign up page. I like to put my sign up page on my contact me page. It's just, a, it's the same page, but I have an option in there that they can sign up on my newsletter, to my newsletter, I should say. So they can either contact me directly or they can sign up to my newsletter. So I have uh, that as a pop-up when people message me, it has a link to that, that I'm, you know, I might be away, but here's a link to my sign up page or here's a link to my website that you can easily contact me through. And that's another way. There's lots of ways that you can make it really simple for people to just easily sign up to your, to your newsletters. Now, premium, second thing is um, premium, pre, preview premium content on your social profiles. So I always like to try and give away a lot of my best content because it's premium content and I believe that I can really serve a lot more people by doing that and have a lot more people interested in connecting with me and I can give them a broad premium content and then when they contact me for maybe one-to-one -one coaching or they might want to do one of my courses then we can get we can dive even deeper into their particular business and move forward from there so I always create premium content and put that on my social media and I could offer my potential subscribers that content for free and when they sign up for my list they can get even more premium content on my list. So if you have white papers, ebooks, infographics, or any other premium content to give away, set up a landing page for each one that you generate to generate a new subscriber from. And that way you can post about it, you can tweet about it, 
um, you can put it on LinkedIn, you can do a little video about it, you can share um, excerpts from it, and you can drive interest and traffic to that page, and they can sign up, and then you would obviously have a welcome email sequence from that point on. So I love to have uh, my sign up pages or my download a free ebook pages on my Instagram website area. So where it says, you know, when you fill out your uh, edit your profile on Instagram, you can put a website in there. So I always try to put in there my latest ebook or somewhere they can sign up to my to my pages and to my uh, my email list. And that way I can then nurture that that lead from there and hopefully bring them into my tribe even more. So try doing those sorts of things to make it really easy as well. The, set, the third thing that you need to do is share an incentive for signups. This is a little bit different from, your, um, from what we just spoke about, but incentives can help when it comes to increasing the number of new subscribers. So many times users just need a little bit of a push to take some action and subscribe. So rather than just having here, sign up here, and it kind of being a broad statement, you can advertise an incentive that if they join your email list, they will get a free something or they can, um, you know, book some time with you for free or whatever it might be that you're happy to give away. And then you can do that on your social media, advertise that on your social media, and it will draw even further attention to your offer and get more people involved in your email list. So make sure that you include always include a picture or a video and a really strong call to action when you post about your incentives like buy more, learn more, read more, things like that because people are then urged to do it or maybe you might want to put a timer on it, things like that. Okay, so the fourth thing is hosting lives and hosting webinars that will help you to gain more subscribers. Obviously now we have so many options for going live uh, on social media, there's the option is on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and obviously YouTube. You can go live on these all these platforms now. There's also a platform called Restream that you can go live on, say Facebook, and you, it will actually allow you to go live on different pages. It'll allow you to go live on different um, platforms like Periscope things like that. So you have a lot of options there to actually go on, do a webinar, talk about a topic that you know really well, share your expertise and ask people to sign up to your um, newsletter in, in, an, in a creative way and a non-invasive way that allows people to join for obviously for value. And it gives a more human side to your business as well. So it shows that you are happy to in, get involved with people and discuss a relevant topic um, that they want to hear and you know obviously sharing your expertise is going to you know build trust and rapport with people as well but remembering that the main goal for hosting your webinar is to capture leads capture for capture leads in the forms and new subscribers I try not to do I, I don't want to do like selling in my lives I prefer to save that for landing pages that people want to opt in and they know they're going to see a webinar that will have an offer at the end. Um, but during my lives and things like that, I would prefer to just keep it friendly and just honest and have uh, no real offers other than freebies and, and getting people to connect with me through my email. You can also, as we spoke about yesterday, host a giveaway contest or a sweepstakes. So if you watch the webinar yesterday, sorry, the live yesterday, you'll see that um, we spoke all about giveaways and contests. And I can't stress enough how much a giveaway and a contest will actually take your business to the next level when it comes to engaging with people, getting more followers getting new um, subscribers and also having building that rapport and trust with people. The next thing we want to talk about is crafting a compelling, a more compelling offer. The most important and most significant way to increase your subscribers is to make your offer super appealing. So while you can change the colors or of, of your buttons and things like that, in that, in that, in that improve small factors in your emails. 
if you don't have a proposal that converts, you're actually wasting your time and your money. You really need to focus on giving your target audience what they really, really want, and then that way they'll actually start to uh, tell more people about you and, and hopefully share your emails, and then you can also gain subscribers that way. I like to hold a survey, um, even if it's just one question, asking what my audience wants to know more of. So what I say is, I usually have this on my thank you page. I, I never have a message that just says, success, you've just joined my email list. I, it redirects to a thank you page, and I call that my golden page, because I have a, a one question survey on there that doesn't do anything else, but it just sends me a message to let me know what the answer to that question is. And if you have seen my thank you page, it just asks, if you were to wave a magic wand, what would you like me to talk about on my next podcast? And I sometimes I change the question up, but it was basically asking people what they want to hear about more. Um, and it works really well. I, I get a lot of I get a lot of feedback through that, and it allows me to then produce more for my audience as to what they really want, which is what you want to do. You want people want to hear about what you can do for them. You kind of have a People look at your business and if whatever it is that you're doing, they see you as if you might have a superpower that's going to fix their problems. So if you're trying to fix a problem that isn't there through your email list, they're not going to be interested. So it's really key to find out what your, what your audience, what your tribe wants to hear from you. And it also helps if you get stuck for ideas. Now, the next thing is make the process as easy as possible. We talked about this earlier and I just want to stress this again. It has to be really, really easy. The simpler you make your opt-in form, the more likely someone will be willing to subscribe. So remove having a last name, remove having the address and a phone number field on your form and just have their first name and their email address. and subscribe button that's it that's all you need because you can gather if unless of course it's a product that you need to send to people um, and they're buying something from you like a hardcover book or whatever or a product that you're selling make sure that that email subscriber form is opt-in form is super 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 simple but you always want to get their first name you always want to get the first name because not every email is going to have, email address is going to have their name in it and I like to be able to call people by their name in my emails as well. It just brings a personal touch to the email. So that's all you need though. It's just the name and the email address and a subscribe button. And obviously that's all they have to do, but you can put like a little description there of what they're going to get that and that sort of thing. But we want to make it as easy, as easy as possible. You can also, um, the next thing we want to do is encourage people to share the emails. So there's lots of ways you can do that. You can do that in the body of the email, but if depending on the uh, apps or the software that you're using, there should be a share uh, button that you can add to your email that will allow people to share that email to other people. And encourage people to do that. If, if it's something that you know that is really valuable information, then say, hey, you know, if you if you know somebody who would also benefit from this information, please feel free to share my emails with you, with them. And hopefully that'll encourage their friends to sign up so they can get their own emails from you as well. And you know, obviously you're going to find more like-minded people to join your tribe. So the next thing that I want to um, list here is giving your users more control of the content. Part of your goal when growing your email list is to make sure that people don't unsubscribe. If you start to notice an increase in unsubscribes, it might be because people are, might be feeling overwhelmed. You might be sending too many emails. Maybe they are overwhelmed with the amount of information that they're getting, um, or possibly they're just not interested in what you're, 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 you're producing, or possibly they only signed up to get that one thing for free and they just want to disappear after that. And believe me, there's people that will do that, and that's fine. Hopefully you can, you know, get them back at another time. Um, but to combat this issue, you can offer, as I said, I have different subscriber um, categories. 
so I have like a light subscriber um, category so people that only want to get like a one email a month from me maybe there's also another uh, category where people will get a weekly email from me they want to see my when I put a blog up um, and get updates and offers that way and then there's another set another one which is if they are really interested in learning more and more then they might sign up to one of my email courses and they'll get you know if they sign up to say the email course that um, I have with this live they might get an email every second or third day for about five or six emails and then it'll stop and then they'll get just their weekly emails and then eventually I'll have another course and ask them if they want to sign up for that as well. So that's how that one rolls. So there's sort of like a light, medium and heavy <laughs> um, level plans and you can offer that to your, um, to your audience within the emails from the welcome emails that you send out initially. Um, the idea is to try and keep the subscribers on your list, even if they aren't receiving the entire lineup of your emails, but it's good to segment. So segmentation is the key to creating lists of people who are interested if in different types of content who have signed up for different things. So I do teach uh, about segmentation more in my um, 10X, uh, 10x Your Sales and Scale course that's being released in January but that's obviously January 21, but I do have mini e-courses that I send out in my emails as well. So if you're interested in that, let me know and I can um, put you on that email subscriber list. So hopefully these tips will reach, help you to reach the people that already follow you on your social media. Remember anything that you do in your emails, you can share through social media. I do sometimes with my monthly newsletters, I like to, um, in mail, I use MailChimp at the moment, um, primarily because I've been using MailChimp for a long, long time and I have so many templates and things like that that I've created in there that changing over seems a little daunting to me. So I am very interested in Covert, uh, Covert Kit though. I know that that is an amazing platform. So I'm starting to dabble with that platform instead of MailChimp, but I do have the option to share my monthly newsletters. Um, it, there's actually a share button as I'm creating my emails in my newsletters. So I'm able to share them on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So that they always get a lot of engagement, um, I have to say. Although I don't really see a lot of people signing up from the sharing of the actual email because maybe they're able to get it for without signing up so why would they sign up so sometimes I just do that as a way to um, advertise my email list and what they could possibly get if they were to join full-time so um, if you want to start generating great results with your email then you just need to remember it takes a little bit of time you need to put a little bit of effort into it to build a really great list you need to have a plan and make sure you set your goals, okay? So, um, let me just grab this over here. So, you need to know that know your goals, okay? So, all good marketing strategies start with setting goals, SMART goals, so the, um, the S-M-A-R-T goals, so strategic, measurable, actionable, um, the R always gets me um, and then obviously timely so research I think it is um, so you need to make sure that you have those goals set okay so email marketing is no different than that to, to run a successful campaign think about what you want to achieve and think about how long it's going to take to achieve that so some typical goals for an email marketing campaign are initially welcoming new subscribers boosting engagement nurturing existing existing subscribers re-engaging subscribers which is what i try to do every 90 days by sending out a, a, an email that says hey this is a bit awkward but do you still want to hear from me um and segmenting your subscribers so work out the goals that you are creating your campaign for and then create email marketing goals to your overall conversion goals. So according, sorry, according to your overall conversion goals. So also understand there are different types of email campaigns as well. So there's 
promotional emails. So those talk about promoting your sales and offers and self-promotion. Relational emails are giving subscribers things that you've promised them like a gift or the weekly newsletter or relevant information that they can use or it could be you know your ebooks and your workbooks and things like that and then there's obviously your transactional emails so those include subscriber sign up confirmation emails that they might get welcome messages and order purchase confirmations then there's also acknowledge uh, then you have to also think about when you're changing um, subscriber information you have to acknowledge that you've done that and <clears throat> those are usually uh, triggered by your subscribers anyway Make sure you know your audience. If you're just start at getting started with email marketing, you're going to have to make some educated guesses if you want to target your content correctly. So think about your personas or your avatars and what they might want to hear from you. I always start with asking the question, what, what's the bit most common questions I get asked a lot by people that are in my tribe? So. If I get asked all the time, you know, how, how to get more time back in my business, how to post more consistent, um, how to post more consistently, uh, what to post, what are the things I should be posting, um, you know, all those types of questions, then I know, okay, well, I can start there and build my email campaigns from there, and hopefully that'll engage people even more. And also using the right technology, a lot of people overlook mobile, um, people opening their mo uh, emails on their mobiles, and there's a staggering 60% of people will reach for their phone in the morning and check their emails before they do anything else. So optimizing your emails for mobile technology is very, very important because some of the features that are available on desktop email won't be available possibly on a mobile and you don't want anyone missing some vital steps that they might need to take to engage with you. And also, you can find out through your analytics in your, um, in your back end of your email um, software that uh, platforms as well, that which, which are, you know, how many people are on mobile and how many people are not opening on mobile. If you understand those four essential aspects of email marketing, it'll really help you get uh, on the right track for a really good campaign. Um, I also just wanted to talk about subject lines. Okay, so after you've made a plan, how many welcome emails you'll send out? Will it be one or two? Will you send out an email welcoming people and then another follow-up email from that? Will, or will they just go straight onto one of your um, segments or uh, tagged lists or an audience that you've created for that particular sign up page. So once you you make a plan, then think about the, the subject lines that you'll use. Make sure that the subject lines always include, um, you know, a great friendly, it has to be kind of friendly, it can't be too salesy. I, I would always try and avoid saying free or gift or bonus in my in my headlines unless it's, unless people, I know people are going to be expecting that. So like, here's your free toolkit for today or something like that. People are expecting to see that. But make them short, make your subject lines nice and short and informative and it gives them a preview of what they're actually going to see in an email. If you have a misleading or generic or confusing subject line or an, a really over the top subject line, it can really just put people off even wanting to open that email. So make them short, make them informative and really to the point and that'll get best results. People are more, more likely to open that email and, and read it and that, you know, because that subject line will then set the reader's expectations of, of what they're actually about to read and try to refrain from using all caps unless it's actually a really urgent email because sometimes all caps can really just be what they need for them for that sense of urgency to open the email um, and that's fine especially if you're doing like a webinar and it's a replay of the webinar and it's a really great deal that you've offered you might want to put in caps or in brackets last chance to grab this deal that's fine but Try not to use it very often. Reserve the caps, the all caps for, you know, special occasions, I guess. And personalization, we touched on this earlier. 
making your emails more personal and telling stories um, is a really great way to stand out. I know when I receive my emails from people like um, Russell Brunson or um, any of those top people that are in marketing, uh, I love reading their little stories. They always tell me a little bit about their life and I enjoy reading their emails. So make it more personalized, use their first name, tell a little bit about yourself, try to talk a little bit about yourself in regards to what your, you know your audience wants from you. Try not to make it all about you, but by telling a little story that relates to them, it actually brings them closer to you as, as more of a, a friend. They, they kind of read their email as if you're more of a friend than someone trying to make an income from their email, basically. Because it's really been shown that personalizing everything from the subject line to the things that you're offering them will really increase click-through rates and it can really increase um, a significant increase to your rev revenue. And as we spoke about before, segmentation, when it comes to a really good and successful marketing campaign and strategy, one size doesn't fit all and email marketing focuses on getting subscribers to take action. So it really requires you to uh, have a solid understanding of your recipients. Knowing your audience really well can help you create segments that will allow you to tailor the content to each subscriber, which will really ensure engagement, okay? Um, and as I said, mobile optimization, stressing that, I need to really stress that to you. Mobile op optimization is key to having a good email marketing strategy and knowing that people will open your emails because if no one, if someone doesn't use their desktop that often for their emails and they might be on the road all the time and using their mobile for a lot of their business stuff, which I know a lot of people do, if they know that they're not going to be able to read your email very well on their, on their smartphone or whatever, they're not going to open it. So really, really make sure that you optimize that email campaign for a mobile. And not everybody has pictures turned on um, so that they can see images in their emails. So I try to avoid putting too many images in the body of the email. I try to make the emails as simple as I can. I do have a header image that I use quite a lot for different campaigns, but some segmentations don't get that. Some some just have have it like an email that they would be getting as if they were at work getting an email. So just to, to make it really simple and that way it can be read very easily um, without having to have images turned on. And if you have images that you need, like if you're actually making a an announcement with that image, it may not be seen. So it's always good to make sure that your announcements are in text. And if you want to use a, an image to back that up, that's fine. But try to avoid using too many images. And GIFs as well. GIFs are good, but as I said, not everybody has them turned on, so don't don't try not to use them to make an announcement or ha give important information. Just use them as an add-on or something that um, to boost the look of the email rather than it being something that's important for them to know. Okay, so hopefully I've given you some value there. Um, and if if you haven't downloaded your workbook as yet, please head over and do that. It'll you'll have a nice email um, ebook that says that has um, the five different ways that you can nurture an email list, and as well, obviously, whoever's staying to the end of this and has signed up for that will be getting my email swipes today. But your challenge today is so every day for the next for this week, I'm challenging you to get on your social media to boost your momentum on social media with these. Um, challenges and on Friday we're going to wrap it all up and tie it all together and I'm going to show you how you can then replicate this every single week to make your social media really really pump and that will be like how to plan using scheduling tools how to you know make sure that you've got different content every day and um, and keep going with that so that you can plan out your whole month really quickly so your challenge today is to jump on one of your social media accounts, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, any one of them, um, Twitter, whatever one is your primary social media platform, and give a shout out to another account. So this can be any other social media account on the same platform. It can be um, any 
it can be a business, it can be just a person, but I want you to share some cyber love to another business or person that has really meant a lot to you or so maybe it's a, a product that you use a lot that's helped you in your business. You can highlight someone that's inspiring to you and as I said, it can be a business as well that might you know, be helping you in your business. Maybe it's you know shout out to um, MailChimp, for instance. Um, but make it more personal than that. Maybe a, an account that isn't quite as large as MailChimp because you, they might not see it. But make it. You can make it something that you think that your, your audience might enjoy as well. Maybe it's a uh, shout out to something that you know that they will be able to use really, really easily that you use and that you love. Okay. So the key to that is uh, becoming a bit of a resource for your followers. If you just share a few sentences about that person or that product or that business, make sure that you tag them appropriately, an appropriate page. Maybe if you can't tag their personal page, which I wouldn't do, um, tag the business page. Um, use a photo that's based that either from their account or um, a photo of their business or something like that. Um, it'll give your audience a sense of, of what or who it caters to from a visual perspective as well and hopefully that person will see it they might comment on it which will mean that their friends or their audience will then see it as well and you know how that goes you know sharing you know the rule of three someone will know you from that person and, and it, word of mouth is the best advertising anyway so you want people seeing you so this is a good way to get free marketing and also become a resource for your audience the second part of the challenge today is again posting an image or a video on your social media apart from that using a caption from um, either the captions that I send you today or um, a caption that you want to make up yourself it's totally fine but the image will be an inspirational quote I've found in my research that people love inspirational quote images they tend, or in, encouraging words or motivational um, cap, um, pictures. So today, as part of your freebies, you'll also be receiving some of my um, favorite inspirational quote pictures, and uh, that'll come into your email as well. So you can use one of those or use your own. Um, and one of the captions, if you'd like, you can just fill in the blanks. If not, you can make up your own, but I usually try and post something about one of my favorite quotes and, and how that's affected me and how it keeps me going. So that's your second. So today you'll actually be posting twice and hopefully that will um, get some more traction for your social media. Now remember to use hashtags in your posts, okay? You can use my hashtag as well. That will help me to follow you. Um, but also make sure you use a lot of hashtags on your posts. You can use up to 30 on Instagram. I'm not sure you can use quite a lot on Facebook as well. LinkedIn allows you to do it. And if you're struggling with hashtags, I do have a really good article on my um, blog that talks all about um, really four easy ways to create hashtags for your business that you can use over and over again. So if you go to my website, and I will get that blog post up for you now, and post the link in the comments as well. So let me just find that mm -hmm. so let's get I'll post that in a second um, on as I said on Friday we're going to tie this all together and hopefully um, you guys will really have a great month so now it's time to get to some questions I've seen a couple of things come up in the chat box um, so we'll talk about those for about 10 minutes while I quickly get this Four easy hashtag secrets to use for Instagram greatness. That's the blog title, but it can be used for any social media platform. I'm just going to post that in the comment section here. And there we go. There we go. Excellent. Okay. All right. So, Alyssa. Alyssa has asked, for making it easy for people to sign up to your email list, is it a smart choice to have a pop-up on your website when, where they can sign up right away? I've seen them often on sites and blogs. Definitely, yes. I, I think that if you have a pop-up, 
Um, no problem, Natalie. Um, if you have a pop-up that comes up, uh, I would have it just come up once or twice at the most. I wouldn't have it popping up all the time. Pop-ups are a great way to um, engage the person on your website. I usually have my pop-up set to uh, when the person is about to leave the website. So if the cursor goes towards the top of the screen where you can X out of the website or change the URL, um, the pop-up should come up to say, um, you know, before you go, uh, please um, get your freebie or something like that and it will have a, an easy sign up page there but I highly recommend pop-ups they do work really well the only problem with, that I think that, that when they don't work well is if it is annoying you so if it if you're on your own website and test this if it's annoying you it's going to annoy somebody else and I have changed things around on my website based on that a lot because I figure you know, if I'm getting annoyed by my own pop-up, then someone else is going to get quite annoyed with it and jump off my website. And the, the, the point of being on your website is to get um, the return on investment for people being on there. So either buying your products, signing up for your courses or your services or your coaching or anything or whatever it is that you're doing online with your website so or your blog. So make sure the pop-up only comes up maybe once when they first get onto the website it might pop up after a few seconds maybe 10 seconds or maybe when they've scrolled halfway through the page or something like that and then the only other time you want it to pop up is if they're about to leave the um the website and you can set that on some some different um hosts can you know have that fix that for you and you can do that so um i usually do that with my sales pages so uh if I have like a landing page and they decide not to opt in, their pop-up will, will pop up and say, hey, before you go, it'd be great to connect with you, you know, sign up to my email list. So I definitely think that a pop-up is a good idea. I hope that's answered the question. Um, I know I, I like to use ClickFunnels for my landing pages and they have really awesome, easy, technologically easy pages to build and pop-ups to uh, incorporate. I also use WordPress and Divi for my website and you can do plugins for pop-ups as well. So um, just test the pop-ups that you like and work for you and, um, you know, go from there. And is there anything, is there something that you guys want to know particularly that I haven't covered about emails that, um, that you would like more information on that I could possibly send you or I could answer here for you? Um, and is there anything in particular that you're really struggling with in your business that you would like me to hopefully cover on a podcast? Awesome. Thanks, Alyssa. So if, if there's any other questions, um, be, I'd be happy to answer them. How did you enjoy today's, um, live? Was it, was it, uh, informative enough for you? Awesome. Well, tomorrow we're going to be talking about, let me just get my little list of things that we're going to be talking about tomorrow. Tomorrow is a good one. Tomorrow, well, they've all been good ones, I hope, for you guys, but tomorrow we're going to talk about Facebook and Instagram ads and how to either buy your way in or earn your way into uh, an audience. So we're gonna talk a little bit about ads and how to get effective ads created. And then the second thing we're gonna talk about is how to build rapport with people um, so that you can actually get in front of other people's audiences and how to ethically steal other people's audiences. So I know that doesn't sound very good but it is actually really good it's not we're not actually stealing we're just going to you know talk about how to get in front of people that you really want to get in front of so I hope this has been really good for you guys thank you so much for joining me I can't 
express how grateful I am and how appreciative I am that you guys are connecting with me. Um, please, if you want to join the group, it's uh, the 24 Social, the Power of Marketing Entrepreneurs community on Facebook. Please join the group if you haven't already. And um, I will be, I do a lot of um, information in there as well for free for you guys as well. And I allow you guys to also talk about your businesses and things that you want to talk about and ask questions. It's just another way that we can connect as well. So please join the group and please come back tomorrow, same time, same place. And we'll talk about Instagram ads, Facebook ads and Natalie and Alyssa and uh, anyone else that's signed up today or this week will be receiving my email swipe file from my vault. So stay tuned for that and I will see you tomorrow. Take care guys.